Heya, Tay here, and it's tutorial time! Almost a year ago at this point, I did my first big devlog for my game, and in that devlog I talked about how I change my character's outfits a lot. And I said in that video, hey if you guys want a tutorial on how I did that, it was really simple, I don't mind making a tutorial on it, and then I forgot. For almost a year. <laughs> But luckily, the video that I was making is like really kicking my butt and taking time and being really super annoying. So I was searching around, scrambling desperately for a video that I could make quickly so I wouldn't just like not upload videos for like a month or something. And there, at that moment when we needed them the most, a very lovely person asked me in a comment if I could make that tutorial on how I do my outfits. So let's get into it. So here's the thing, even though I'm calling this visual armor, and technically it is, like it changes your outfit based on what you have equipped, it's not as complex as some of you guys are probably looking for. If you're looking for a full like, oh, I want to be able to change my shoes and that'll show up, and I want to change my shirt and that'll show up, and I want to change my cape and that'll show up, you're going to need a different system than what I'm about to show you. This is just what made the most sense for me and my game, and it's pretty easy to set up. But if you're really looking for that more robust, actual, like, visual equipment on a whole bunch of different layers type of system, there are still plugins out there for that. Basically, just Google search visual equipment RPG maker and you'll find some plugins for it. I did it very quickly. I'll show some on the screen. But anyway, on to my simple visual equipment, I guess I'd call it. The basic premise behind it is that you change the character sprite based on what you have equipped. So we find a new outfit. I go to the Equip menu and I put it on my character, and then whenever I exit the menu, a common event triggers. That common event will check what my characters are wearing and change their sprites based on that. I don't change face sprites because I don't really use my face sprite things ever, but I will change the walking around sprite and the battler sprite. So let's set it up. First, let's make sure that our sprites have more than one outfit. We'll have to draw that ourselves or edit that ourselves, I guess, in this case. I'm just going to plop Harold's head onto a different sprite. And hurrah, we have new clothes. So now that we have our Harold with two outfits, we're going to set up our armor. The way I have it in my game is that basically there's an armor type for each party member. So we'll use the four default party members in RPG Maker MV and we'll set up armor types for them. So we've got armor Harold, armor Therese, is that her name? Armor Marsha, Armor Lucius, maybe? And then just for good measure, we'll set up a shield armor type that won't actually affect the visuals of the different characters. And I actually think in the equipment types, I'm going to completely remove head. So no head? Because I feel like a player would expect hats to be visual as well. Because I mean, why can we see our clothing but not the hat we put on? So to not let down player expectations, we're just going to remove those expectations to begin with. And now let's set up some actual armor. So let's do Harold default armor. We'll even give it a little icon. And this one is going to be armor Harold and the equipment type is going to be body. And we'll sell it for 10 gold. Now I'm just gonna copy paste that into Harold new armor. We'll make one for Therese as well. Now let's go ahead and make a treasure chest where we could find these different armors. We'll put Harold new armor and I'm also going to make one for Therese's new armor. And let's put Therese in the party. We've made our armor, we have all of our setup but now we need to actually trigger a common event because as it is now, changing to our new armor does nothing. <laughs> so let's set up our common event. I don't have any common events, so that's handy. Let's just go ahead and use common event one and set it up visual armor. I'm gonna add a comment right here at the top that says Harold and then another comment for Therese. This is really handy whenever you have, say, nine party members like my game does. Just making sure you can keep everything sorted and well organized. So we're going to start with a conditional branch. And it'll be if actor, Harold, is wearing armor, Harold default armor, we're going to change his image 
Change actor images, Harold. If he's wearing his default, we're going to leave everything at default. I didn't set up battlers, but here's where you would change the battler as well. We'll just copy that and paste. And now we'll set it if he's wearing his new armor, we're going to change his image to his new armor. And we're just going to do the same thing for Therese. Now we've got to get it to actually show up and that's going to require a plugin. The one that I use in my game is this one by Hakuin Studio, the Eli Quit Menu Common Event. By the way, this also has an MZ version and everything that I'm showing you can do in MZ. Just because I'm using MV for this tutorial does not mean that this is an MV specific tutorial. You know what I mean? To get any of the plugins by Hakuin Studio to work, you also need their Eli Book plugin. So make sure that you download that one as well. Go ahead and set both plugins up in the plugin manager. And in Eli Book, there are a couple of other options to mess with as well. It's kind of interesting. For the Quit Menu Common Event plugin, however, just set it to the common event that you set up, in our case, common event number one. And actually, this should work now. Let's just test it out. We found Teresa's armor. We found Harold's armor. Let's go equip them. And they're in new clothes. As you can imagine, this is going to look much better and more smooth and seamless if we didn't have this sort of basic blurring the background type of menu. Anyway, thank you for tuning in to this sort of small tutorial. Hopefully that bigger video that was driving me crazy will get to come out soon-ish. Probably not next week because of the holiday. I'm traveling for holidays, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are too. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning into this tutorial. If you liked that tutorial and would like to see a different tutorial of some kind, um, just ask in the comments. If you have a more complex question or video idea request or something like that, you can ask me in the email that I have linked in the description below. And if you're curious about my game, I have the itch.io linked for it. Unfortunately, I haven't updated my itch.io, so it is not super up to date, but I will get to it at some point, eventually, sometime. Okay, thanks, bye.